guys, welcome back to Angel Angela and on today's podcast, I wanted to talk to you guys about the narcissist and their holiday hoover. The narcissist and their holiday hoover, which, you know, if you guys know you're dealing with a narcissist, you guys should know that these people don't go away. You know, to them, it's like till death do us part. That's how they look at it. So you literally have to get rid of who you used to be. You cannot continue to be the same person, um, you know, if you want to succeed, if you want to make it out of that narcissistic matrix. If you want to leave the narcissist matrix, you have to leave. You have to distance yourself from people. You have to reevaluate your relationships with people. So when I left, you guys, the, the narcissist matrix, what I came to realize was that um, narcissists don't just let you let you go away easily. So it doesn't matter if, you know, you don't talk to them for months or years, they will hoover you, they'll come back around, you know, um, if your family are narcissists, you know, they'll hoover you, they'll want to keep you um, around the family, but it's only to destroy you. It's only to destroy your reputation. It's only to make themselves look like good people. If you're dealing with, if you've been dealing with this type of person for years, um, you will know that, you know, they'll come in and out of your life for as long as you let them. And, and, you know, if you're not aware that this person's a narcissist, you'll think they're your soulmate, or you'll think that this person's not that evil. You know, they're, you know, this is a family member. They're not that evil. You know, they're inviting you. Um, they're hoovering you for the holidays, you know, um, and things like that, you know, but it's really to make themselves look good. A lot of um, covert narcissists are the type of people that they, you know, portray to be really nice people, giving people, church people even, and they're just trying to hoover you around the holidays, um, invite you to their big house, brag about their children and the things that's going on in their life, um, knowing that they've been trying to destroy you the whole year long, basically. They've been trying to talk bad about you the whole year, um, you know, uh, there's always that one person trying to, to, um, get in the middle of everything and they're trying to make everyone get along. And a lot of times that person in the middle, the messenger, um, they're also a narcissist and that's their image that they're playing with you. They have to play that good cop, bad cop in order to make you, you know, look bad, you know, in order to even get you to come um, and be fooled once again. Um, and you'll know their children, everyone around, they know how they really feel about you. You know, if you guys are doing um, like the secret Santa presents and things like that, if someone gets your present, they'll start making, you know, gestures like they wish they wouldn't have got your present. You know, you'll see the energy that's happening right in front of you. So I did want to talk about you know, narcissists hoovering around the holidays just because I've experienced that where the narcissist will either pull you away from your family, your friends, and they don't want you to um, spend, you know, holidays with the people closest to you, knowing that you don't really see them. Um, a lot of times, maybe if they're not close to their family, um, the narcissist will even feel envious of others. Um, even if they're welcoming the narcissist, right? Sometimes people welcome the narcissist just because they want you to be happy. So um, even when the relationship ends and you're not with this narcissist anymore, and now you're, um, if you if you have a good foundation and you're around your family, the narcissist hates that. You know, um, if the narcissist has broken your foundation, now the narcissist has most likely put you on the side. You know, the narcissist has put you on the side as a main source of supply. So sometimes what you'll notice is that they won't hoover you around the holidays. And that's because they found someone to spend the holidays with, whether it's friends or anyone, um, you know, any anyone around them that they're associating themselves with. Now, if the narcissist is going through things, financial things and, um, you know, problems and, you know, and 
their family or, or, or their spas that they left you for aren't dealing with them and um, they have nothing else to do, they will hoover you. They will hoover you. They'll either hoover you um, a couple days before a holiday or they'll hoover you a couple days after the holiday just to see if, you know, how, how, you know, because they're praying that you miss them around the holidays. That's what they're praying on. They're praying on that you're, that you're still healing from them. So, you know, if they know that the holidays mean something to you, or they know that, you know, um, they, they've left you in in any situation where, you know, you're thinking to yourself, oh, Christmas is coming, you know, around or, you know, um, Valentine's Day is coming around. The narcissist is preparing for the holiday hoover. So they're even preparing um, for Valentine's Day. So if they hoover you, they might come back around portraying to be a friend and not wanting to take things to the next level. And um, in reality, everything is premeditated. So um, the reason I wanted to make this video and I thought that this video would be important for you guys, also based on my experience with dealing with these type of people, whether it's family or um, relationships, what you notice with a lot of narcissist family members um, or families, should I say, is that a lot of these people, right? Before you before you have this awakening to what narcissism is, you and you think about family and you think about holidays and um, people just getting together and people that you don't really see coming together. And um, sometimes, you know, it's easier to smile in someone's face when they don't really know you. And I remember growing up, things used to, you know, be said about me to other people, like distant family members. And I remember when they would come around, you know, they would be like super mean, or they would say something way like out the box. And I would think to myself, like, why is that person acting like they know me? I don't even know them. I remember just as a kid, like thinking to myself, like a teenager thinking to myself, I don't know this aunt. She's like a really distant aunt because narcissists are, you know, able to triangulate you with other people that don't really know you like that, you know, and they're not around you to to witness anything or to really have their perspective on you until this person, this narcissist, you know, um, starts telling others things about you. And a lot of times they do this because the narcissist has nothing else to do. You know, so they just um, sit out, you know, talk about people, talk on the phone about people, go in the kitchen, have their coffee or tea and just gossip all day. So what I realized um, when I experienced that from a distant family member, um, you know, I, I realized when you break out of that matrix, right, you're looking back at your life, you're looking at back at your old life. And what I realized looking back at my old life was that a lot of times when people got together around the holidays, that would practically be it. Like you don't really talk to these people um, on an everyday basis. You don't really converse with them. What I started to notice is that you're looking at these people like they're your family, right? And because you know them, you know them growing up, you you have childhood memories. But then when you get older, um, you start to see the competition that's going on, um, you know, whether it's narcissist aunts or grandmothers, there's this competition going on with the cousins and the grandkids, everyone. So if you're not paying attention to this, if you're not paying attention that certain people are close to each other and you're the outsider, you're not really close to anyone. You're just cool with everyone. Being cool with everyone will get you killed in a narcissist family because you don't have no close bond with anyone. So that means that when you go through something, failures in life, instead of people feeling bad for you, they laugh at you. They 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 tell you you're not good enough. They um they um you know point fingers at you. Um anytime you need help or, or even financial help or anything, they look at you like a disappointment. 
But when you look at other people, they're willing to go over and beyond for those people. And you might think to yourself, well, those people have more or those people have both of their parents or those people. You'll you'll come up with different scenarios of why you're getting treated differently from others. But the true the, the truth about it is that you're not kissing anyone's ass. And you're upset because people are judging you and they're trying to control you when you don't even talk to them every day. So you'll see that if you were to be around these people for the holidays um, or, or accept their Hoover, it's just to make fun of you. It's just to sit there and talk about your failures to others or try to see they're trying to pretend like they can help you to get information about where you're at in life. You know, they're trying to act like they want to help you or they're trying to guide you. They're trying to make it seem like things are so easy, but they're the ones helping each other out and they've excluded you out a long time ago. These people are very, very um, diabolical. They're very calculated um, and they know how to hypnotize people to believe their lies because they've been doing it to those same people for so long. So when you start to wake up, especially if these people are older than you and they're stuck in their old ways, um, they're trying to make you believe that their way of living of life, it's correct and you're wrong. And they're trying to keep you stuck in the past, even though you're smarter than them now. I've had my own aunt, my own aunt, you know, during around Christmas time, she told a big lie about me. I've always told you guys she had cancer and she told people that I hit her when I didn't hit her. When I'm not even capable of that, just because when I was a young girl, I used to slam the door and do things like that, you know, in a very kitty way. So these people are forever slandering you. You know, you they invite you to their events um, and they're mocking you when you get there. You know, in my case, I was raised by my grandmother. She raised me, you know, since I was a baby and I always had a close relationship with her. But her daughter, her oldest daughter, um, always made lies about me, always turned my grandmother against me. And anytime I would be around my grandmother for the holidays, even just sitting next to her, my grandmother would tell me, come sit next to me. And my aunt will come and she'll be like, we're going to take a family picture. And she would be like, you know, move to the side. I'm going to take a picture next to my mom. She's not caring that I don't have the same foundation that her kids have. She's thinking about herself and she's willing to take me out to fulfill her kids needs through my grandmother because she looks at it like that's her mother and there's no empathy there. You know, that's how narcissists are. I, I learned that a long time ago, you guys. So the true disappointment, the true betrayal is to have people that are the closest people to you that are supposed to be the closest people to you um, to betray you by, uh, by, you know, throwing you under the bus. And they don't technically really know you because they don't even talk to you every day to know you. They haven't even gave you the opportunity to get to know the new version of you. So they're stuck talking about you in the past because they're stuck in the past. Everyone's coming together. Everyone's bragging about themselves. Um, you know, everyone's being fake with with each other. Um, and they're, ex you know, if they know that you've always been naive to narcissism, they always treat you like you don't know anything. So when you start coming around these people after you've had an awakening, and especially whether it's the awakening came through them or it came through a relationship, and you have this awakening and you've changed, now when you come around these people for the holidays, um, they treat you like they always known you because they don't know you outside of these holidays and these get togethers. They don't really truly know you. And you think you know them because you're like, you know, I go I go visit, you know, once a month. Once a month, we have a barbecue or something and we go or, you know, or you might say, well, we really don't have time to have barbecues on the weekends and get together on the weekends because we live in different cities. You can say things like that, right? And what I realized was that when I came around these people for the holidays, they always had this perception of me that never, ever changed and um, they stuck to it. 
no matter what I did, no matter what I accomplished, it was always like a disrespect. There was always something there. Um, there always was this need to control almost um, even when I became an adult, it was this almost like they were my parents or something. And I'm like, you're not my parent. You don't know me. Um, just trying to get in my business, even calling my my college that I was going to. These people were calling my college and I don't live with them. I don't live with them. Think about how psycho that is for someone that's not your parent to call your college and ask about your grades and things like that. And these are not people that you live with. They're just trying to get information out of you. And I thought that was the the weirdest thing, you know, um, because if I have a relationship with someone, I have a relationship with them, right? You're close to that one cousin, you're close to that one aunt, but you might not be close to everyone in the same way. But these people gossip. So everything just keeps going around full circle. You're you're having trust in, in those couple of um, family members. Those are the people you trust. And the whole time, you guys, these people that you trust, they're only around you to get information out of you because the the family has disowned them in some type of way. There's some type of disrespect going on that you're not even aware of, of how serious it is. And they're like, you know, they're pointing it, pointing things out to you that they already knew a long time ago. And you're not even knowing because you don't really know how narcissists work. You know, they don't even, you know, they're telling you they don't get along with certain people or, you know, whatever they're telling you, they might not even be talking about these narcissistic people. But because you distant yourself from these other narcissists, you might not even say why or explain to them why. But because they're so used to controlling the people in your life, which is your family or the people around you, and even you at one point, what they try to do is that they try to get information from you. You know, holidays come back, come around and you're telling yourself, I'm not going to go around these people anymore because they don't really know me. These people really don't know me. They just judge me um, when I come around them. It's a competition, you know, a competition with our husbands, our competition with our wives, um, you know, and, and just disrespectful. You know, um, they certain people will feel superior to others. It almost just starts to feel like you're going to, you know, go and hang out with your coworkers. That's almost how it becomes, because now you're on this out this world where you're um outside the box and you're looking in the box and you can see how people people view you you can view people and have your own opinion about them and who they are and you start to see that you know um the more you distance yourself the more they try to involve and force themselves in your life and um I think that the worst part about like narcissists from your past hoovering especially around the holidays because they're preying on on you know you know they're preying on your weaknesses they're thinking you know you still haven't figured them out if you still keep coming around and I think the worst part about it is that they actually slander you and attack you more than they help you so you know sometimes you know parents go overboard and things like that but you know, if you know that these people are really, you know, they have good intentions, it's different. But when these people haven't done anything but attacked you and then they're playing the victim when you go off and then they, they come back around during the holidays trying to act like they invited you or whatever, you know, these people are playing games and they're all in it. Everyone, you know, even the people that you think you're close to. What makes it so messed up is that a lot of times you'll think to yourself, I don't really see my family and have to deal with them besides the holidays right and what you're not even realizing because this is something I, I paid attention to if if you go back and you look at pictures from holidays or your childhood um, just look at pictures you start to really notice that certain people are clicked up you don't even realize that you were the black sheep the whole time because you ha you didn't have anyone in the family that you were truly clicked up with. I would literally, you know, 
get together around these people, (laughs) you know, um, and everyone just arrogant the whole time. And I'm thinking everyone's playing around. You know, my aunt's getting there. She's comparing herself to the Kardashian family. She's, you know, everyone has decorated. And this other aunt's walking in saying, you guys are done decorating. I just want to take a picture. I'm just here to take a picture. And these people, you know, two, three, four, five times my age, everyone, even my 90-year-old grandmother. So I got to learn a lot from these so you might have been clicked up with certain people but you um you know it's like you know your cousins or certain people start coming around you or they're asking for you when you get to the party or the the holiday event and once you get there um you know they're all happy to see you and everyone's clicked up but what you don't realize now is what you don't realize you know be, be once you wake up is that A lot of those people were clicking up outside of holiday events, outside of holiday events, outside of birthdays, outside of Christmas, Thanksgiving, New Year's. They were clicking up and they'll tell you, oh, we don't have time to, you know, we don't really have time to see our family besides the besides the holidays. That's when everyone comes together. And these people are narcissists and they're trying to invite you. They'll send you gifts, flowers, invitations, inviting you, knowing they've treated you wrong, knowing they've been talking about you all year long. But they'll send you gifts, anything, and then they'll tell other people that they sent you a gift and you never said anything back or you they sent you a card or some flowers. You never responded. But the the what you don't even realize is that you were the black sheep all along because as much as they make it seem like holidays are the days where everyone must come together, they don't tell you that during the year they're they're taking trips to Vegas, they're taking trips to other states. They're going on, you know, trips to go get a, a you know, a spa treatment. Um, you know, they're having little pool parties, barbecues. They're um they're 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 doing all of these things behind your back and they're not even telling you. But when they get around, you know, your grandmother or your certain people in the family, they're telling these people because they want to make themselves look good is, oh, I I invited so-and-so and they didn't answer. They do not mess with you all year long. They do not invite you to anything. They don't want you around. But holidays, they ask you to come around and you think to yourself, well, I really don't see these people all the time. I guess one day can't hurt. But the whole year they were talking about you. The whole year they were plotting on you. The whole year they were scheming on you. They were calling your school, calling your job. They were, you know, calling your husband, calling your wife behind your back. They were causing problems. You were going through situations in life and they weren't there for you. You know, they never offered their friendship to you. Yet a lot of these people that you spend holidays with, they're constantly calling each other every day. Every Not a day goes by that they're not on a group chat. Not a day goes by that they're not calling each other. But they sit there and they slander you. They tell others what, what they've done for you or what you've, you know, what you haven't done or what went wrong in your life. Or they talk about your, your marriage or your failed relationship or you're not married through the church. You're not this. You're not that. But the holidays come around and they make turkey and um, ham and everything you can think about, all type of desserts. And then they tell you to come over and they're like, hey, try my pumpkin pie. Hey, try my cheesecake. I made it. I made this macaroni and cheese. Come taste it. But the whole year they've been talking about you, your kids, everyone. And they will invite you. They will until they finally know you're too. And the reason they continue, let me tell you why they continue to invite you. They continue to invite you because they know you haven't fully woken up. Because if you fully woken up, and they'll be scared of you. They'll be scared of you. They won't even really want to make eye contact with you. They don't really want to invite you. But you know what they will do? They will invite someone close to you. They'll invite someone that they know that 
they haven't really done anything to, but they know they're connected to you in some way, they'll, you know, try to contact those people to still get information out of you. They might even send you a gift because now they won't invite you anymore, but they'll send you a gift, you know, or say something like, I forgive you, or I hope you forgive me. I'm here for you always, your family. They don't stop. These people don't stop. What I realized, even though I went through this, these things, it made me realize, wow, you know, these narcissist family members, they cross the line so many times. They're pretending with you, you know, around the holidays, they would come around, they would invite me. And I never noticed until I start looking at the pictures that certain people would take pictures closer to each other. You'll see their faces, their cheeks, their body language. And I would note, I would think to myself, wow, these people were clicked up the whole time and I didn't really know. Like they were talking to each other every day to, to survive. And I didn't know that. I mean, I would see certain people get calls every day But I didn't know how serious it was, right, when it comes to these narcissists. I didn't know how serious it it came to, to them clicking up with other people and things like that. I didn't realize that. And, you know, and I think that me going through that narcissistic relationship, even though I went through hell, it opened up my eyes to how narcissists really are and how they work and how obsessive they are over you once you're not, you know, connected to them anymore. Once you distance yourself from them, Um, they constantly want to know what's going on in your life. So even if you do not get that Hoover, that direct Hoover, even with the with your ex boss, um, they're watching you. That's what you guys need to know. They're watching you. I was with someone nearly 10 years and, you know, if we weren't together, you know, on and off, and if we weren't together around a certain holiday, I would think to myself, this person's, you know, having the time of their life. But it was after a while that I started to notice that they were watching me to see if, you know, I'm spending the holidays with someone else, if, you know, um, if I'm spending my holidays with a friend, everything they were watching you know, they'll even hoover me. Um, This person even hoovered me and was like, oh, happy Thanksgiving after they did something super disrespectful. But they're thinking if I contact you during a holiday where I know you might be vulnerable, you know, a lot of people say around the holidays, a lot of people end up dead because of heartache, because of loneliness. So they use that to their advantage. You know, once you don't care about holidays and you see this, how everything is set up, um, it doesn't hurt you to be alone, even on a holiday, even if that came, if it came to that. Right. So like I told you guys, I hadn't changed my number in years. Um, My ex that I was with, you know, me and him, we were, we've been done for years. And um, when I was with him, I had a friend, um, a guy friend, and I, my guy friend, um, my guy friend, he kind of was one of those friends that, you know, you can call when you need something or you can talk to about, you know, your relationship. And I remember at the time when I was with my ex that when my, when my ex narcissist would, um, discard me I would call him right because I couldn't understand and when I would talk to him I would feel like I was talking to like like an older brother so I looked up to him in a way because I was like this guy you know he's like a my friend he's you know he's you know whenever I'm going through something he's willing to help me if I have a flat tire you know he'll come and help me um if I really really need him I know he's there and I can talk to him anytime about my relationship. And he would also talk to me about his relationship. And this is what, what I'm telling you guys. When you're friends with with the opposite sex, you have to be careful because the person you're dealing with might not be a victim. They might be a narcissist. So when I had my during that time, when I would tell my friend things about the narcissist, he would say to me, the narcissist, you know, 
he wouldn't say the narcissist, but he would say, um, he's never going to change. He's always going to be like that. He's not going to do anything. He's not going anywhere. Like he's always going to be like that. You can't change someone like him. It was like, he knew that the narcissist, the person I was with was a different type of animal, a different type of breed right away. Right. It's like, he knew and he knew because he was surrounded by that and he was surrounded by that lifestyle himself. But he made it seem like he was different from other guys. Like, I'm not like other guys. I could have been sucked into that trap and been just as much of a dog as them, but I'm not like them. And what's so crazy is that when I met the narcissist, that's the same persona he made it seem like he was, like he's not like other men. And he would even talk bad about his brothers and his family. But that's what narcissists do. They play the victim. They blame everyone. They they tell you they don't get along with certain people, but you see them talking to them. You see them talking to them. Look, I've also been in the same situation where you don't get along with someone, but I don't I I don't waste my time, you know, surrounding myself with someone I don't get along with. I rather just stay away from them. So when they tell you they don't get along with their family and people, but they're still hanging around them, it says a lot about them because you know, certain people don't even want to be around their family during the holidays at all. But why is it that a narcissist is sitting there eating turkey with their family, knowing that they've told you that they don't get along with these people yet? You will see that they they will still connect themselves to these people. So you're sitting here trying to disconnect from the narcissist in your life, but this person is portraying to be the victim and they they um you know, they're pushing you away from from everything you knew, yet they're not pushing these people away. I was like a little kid, you guys, who really didn't know anything about anything because I remember vividly thinking to myself when all this was going on, I was thinking to myself, my inner self literally said to me, oh, the narcissist, they've been lying to you. They're not really, you know, an empath. They don't get along with their family, but their family knows how they feel about them. They all know how they're each other, how everyone's personality is. And the narcissist is really mad because they can't always have their way. That's all it's about. And that's when I had that epiphany. I remember, you know, for the first time in my life dealing with this person that I finally spoke my inner voice and I literally looked at them and I was like, oh, you're the ringleader. You're just mad because you can't get everyone on board. And he had this big smirk in his face. I'm saying I've been with this guy for years. He had this smirk on his face like she finally figured it out. It was scary, you guys. So, yeah, they'll do anything. They're keeping some type of con connection to these people or even exes or people from their past. They're keeping some type of connection and you'll see it during the holidays. Certain people will be invited. Exes, even exes will show up at these parties, at these family gatherings. And that's what I realized when um, this guy that I that I was friends with, um, that's when I realized that this guy that I was friends with um, wasn't really an empath because after I went through everything I experienced and I realized the game narcissists play, I realized, wow, this friend that I was friends with, he's not really an empath. And um, he knew the narcissist and what type of person the narcissist was because he was just like him. But he portrayed um, with me that he wasn't, you know, one minute he was happy in his relationship. And next thing you know, he was always complaining to me about certain things. But Coming from where he came from, I knew that the girl that he was with um, did a lot for him, you know. So to me, it's like if you came from the bottom and you're with someone and um, regardless of what you're saying that this person's not perfect or they get mad or accuse you of cheating or whatever, um, I didn't realize back then, but I started to realize 
everything he ever told me was something that I could actually relate to when it came to this woman that he was describing. And then I realized my friend isn't my friend. My friend is a narcissist and he's waiting for the perfect opportunity to get with me or for me to call him and tell him that something bad happened so that he can come and rescue me. That's what that was about. And I didn't know at that time. But once I realized what happened, I was so hurt that I couldn't just date someone, you know, especially a friend. I didn't want to date my friend. So I, you know, once I I, I ended that relationship, I was so hurt by that relationship because it had woken me up to all of my narcissistic friends and all the people around me. And I just started to look at life differently. So this narcissist friend um, would contact me sometimes around the holidays or they'll try to act like they want to send me a gift like, you know, and now that I think about it, it's like, why would you want to send your friend gift? Why are you why are you making it so um, it's like, why are you making such a big deal and trying to get, you know, go out of your way to give me something. So that's how I felt with him. Because like I said, narcissists, they like to keep a close union on each other. And with me and him, we never had a friendship like that. Like he was someone who I hung out with a couple of times to the point where I can count them on my hand and maybe for a couple of months. And then I never talked to this guy again. So he made it seem like we were closer than what what we really were, because I technically don't really know them the way I thought I did. I just was I was naive and I was very friendly towards people. And um, not only that, but because I was in a relationship, I never really hung out with him. So the only time I talked to him was over the phone and it was mostly I was just talking about the narcissist. That's all I was doing with this person. You know, so technically, you know, they weren't really my friend. I didn't talk to them every single day. I would talk to them once in a while and it was just bad vibes. And, you know, um, I didn't really know them like that. That's another thing I realized. I didn't really know anything about their past. I didn't know where they grew up. This is just someone that I claimed was my friend just because they did a couple of nice things for me. So he knew I was young and naive. And that was the point. That's the point I'm trying to come across. So I I grew up really fast after that relationship. It was so horrible that I grew up really fast after that. And um, what I realized was that that friend started contacting me. So he will start hoovering me around the holidays. And if he couldn't get a hoover um, around the holidays, he would just hoover me throughout the year. So, you know, at the time I had Facebook, he would try to send me messages. Um, I basically deleted him as a friend. Then he was like, he made another page to add me. And I thought it was weird, like you're adding me from another page and I deleted it. And um, when me and the narcissist ended things completely, I actually deleted my whole Facebook completely and um, social media. Then I ended up making an Instagram and his father, my um, some guy added me and I was like, who's this? You know, because it was like an older guy. I was like, who's this older guy? And then I clicked on it and to come to find out it was his father. It was like someone's grandfather. And I'm like, he looks just like him. So I knew that the dude that friend requested me was his dad. And I was thinking, like, why would he have his dad friend request me? That's weird. Or did he take his dad's phone or something and friend request me to see if he can, you know, look at my page? But it was just the simple fact that he's trying so hard to reach me and we don't have any any ties, you know, like um, we're, we were just friends. I realized that I should never even had been friends with this guy. He was older than me. You know, he's a narcissist himself. I distanced myself from this person. I'm like, he's too old for me. He's old enough to be my dad, basically. So um, years passed by. I'm not lying to you guys. Four years, four years passed by. And um, about, uh, I would say like a year ago, um, 
are over a year ago. To be honest with you guys, four years passed by. And during those four years, he's contacted me several times from different phone numbers, um, text me, I'll just block the number. During those four years, different numbers, literally blocking every number, still contacting me. Um, I showed him no interest, especially, um, and, and this happened, I, I let go of this friendship a long time ago when I ended it, ended the relationship with the narcissist, I ended the friendships, you know, the friendship with him and a lot of other people, but this guy, because he felt like he invested in me, he thought his real thought was she's never dealt with the narcissist before I'll come in after that's what he was thinking. But I learned that lesson after this narcissist. And I, I never, I protected my energy from any and everyone. And what I realized was that this man wouldn't leave me alone. Now, I've told you guys from several phones, he've, he's, you know, tried contacting me, he'll text me and he'll say something. And then he's even left me voicemails. He actually left me a voicemail last year. I think it was the end of the end of last year or the beginning of this year, one of them. And on the message, he said my name, but he said it in a way that it was very authoritative. Like like you like the way he said it was very authoritative and he goes, "I got some good news for you. Um give me a call." And I'm thinking to myself, Good news for me. I haven't talked to you in years. Why like why would I want to what good news could you offer me if we don't have any ties? We don't have any connections. We don't even have mutual friends. You're just the guy that was my friend or I thought was my friend but was really preying on me. And I only hung out with you a couple times. I didn't hang out with you like that. I've only hung out with you a couple times because I ended up getting into a relationship. And during my relationship, I definitely didn't want to be seen talking to you or being around you. You know, so that's how I know this man's a narcissist. And what happened with this this um, holiday Hoover that I'm talking to you guys about is that they've hoovered me again. So they left me a voicemail in the beginning of this year and they're telling me to call them. But the way they said my name, it was very authoritative. Like you could tell just listening. I wish I could play it for you guys, but it you could tell that he is pissed. He is pissed. Like he's looking for me and I wouldn't put it past I wouldn't put it past him to actually um, know where where I, you know, pass by, pass by the house that I basically used to live in because he knew where I used to live in, you know. So I wouldn't pass, you know, I, I wouldn't put it past him doing something like that, you know, just because he keeps trying to figure out how to get in contact with me. And if I keep calling the same number, and in four years, I don't get a response. Why would I, first of all, why would I continue calling that number? And why would I have that number on my phone? Why would I even have that number on my phone? So, you know, that let me know right there. I'm dealing with a whole narcissistic psychopath, someone who is like no common sense. You know, you you would think that he would think to himself, you know, this girl is a lot younger than me. Last time I talked to her, she was in a bad relationship. I haven't heard from her in years. She probably changed her number. She never answers. I can't find her on social media. I'm blocked. She's deleted her profile. Why are you still looking for me? Like, you know, there's only so many ways that someone can tell you they don't want to be your friend or, or, or you know, and I do feel like there's a difference between someone who ring you around the holidays that you've had a good friendship with that has never really backstabbed you and who um, 
has good intentions for the most part. Someone, it, There's a difference between someone who's an old friend and who you know that person's not a narcissist. You know that person, you know, wouldn't do anything to you, has never done anything to you. Um, you know that this is a friend that you don't have to see every day, but they're your friend. You know, they're a good friend. They're You know that if you call them, if you really need something, they'll, they're the type of person that would be there for you. With him, um, I feel like our friendship wasn't that strong for him to be hoovering me. And not only that, but he's flirted with me before. So that's how I know, like, you're not hoovering me because you just want a friendship. I don't really have anything to offer the friendship. We really don't have anything in common. And now that I'm awake, um, I realize that you're just not who I thought you were. And um, when I say the narcissist will hoover you on the holidays, I've already dealt with being hoovered by someone I'm in a relationship with on and off for years. They don't stop. Narcissists don't leave you alone unless you leave them alone. They'll just put you they'll just put you on a shelf. And what I've realized with this guy is that something's not going on right in his life and he's trying to suck me in and I'm not even close to him or have that much of a connection with him for him to to try to suck me in you know and I just think that he's too he's he's a lot older than me and he should know better and I also think that you know if you haven't spoken to someone after a couple of years for you to still keep calling that same phone number it's weird you know it's weird Um, you know, so I've, like I said, I've dealt with narcissist hoovering during the holidays. I, um, also have dealt with this psycho guy that has been trying to hoover me for years now, for years. And what I've noticed is that he does contact me around the holidays more. And, um, you know, I think it's because he knew, um, my past experience with my family. So when you're dealing with narcissists during the holidays, what what I do advise you guys, um, you know, because I have an I have a 90 year old grandmother who was hoovered by her first boyfriend, and she she's had seven kids, ha- has you know children, has grandkids. Her her um my grandfather passed away and she still got hoovered at 90 years old. And she told me this is how these narcissists really are. And I believe her. There's no way someone's going to be hoovering a 90 year old woman. The narcissist will be old as hell, old as hell hoovering you. They don't stop. Um, You know, so I did, you know, and I can go into details about that. Because I think that that's very important, even with the with someone hoovering at 90 years old, hoovering, still playing these games, knowing they married someone else, knowing they left you, knowing they cheated, knowing they lied and they feel like, oh, enough time has passed by. Let me hoover you around the holidays. No big deal. They don't have any shame. Um, You know, they're just putting you on a shelf and they think that they can come in and out of your life whenever they feel like it. So, you know, that's what a lot of narcissists will do. Um, Narcissist family members, um, sometimes they'll have someone reach out to you. Um, And sometimes, you know, um, they uh, sometimes some of these family members, they don't want to look you in the eyes anymore. They know that, you know, too much. They know that you you've woken up. Just like certain narcissists, they won't hoover you because they know that they left the relationship um, in a way where they were fully exposed. But they will um, they will say happy Thanksgiving to you or happy um, or they they will text you and say Merry Christmas. I know things didn't work out, but I just want to say Merry Christmas. But, you know, that person, you know, that narcissist doesn't care about holidays. They don't care about holidays and birthdays unless you're giving them something. They don't care. They can care less. If anything, they hate holidays because they feel like people are expecting something out of them. So, um, you know, this video, you guys, was just to help you guys for people that, you know, you 
know that you have a toxic family, you know, you don't want to be around these people, you know, that all they do is, you know, talk, they just need someone to talk bad about, Um, you know, friends, friends that you know, that they were never really your friend, you know, they never really had good intentions. And they were always lying to you and keeping things from you. And you weren't able to see those things until you woke up out of that narcissist matrix. And now they're hoovering you and they won't leave you alone. Um, There's a difference when it comes to friendships. Like I've told you guys, certain people, you know, are narcissists, you know, um, certain people will come back, you know, because maybe they went through narcissist abuse and now they understand what you went through. They couldn't understand you. You know, um, many people will hoover you around the holiday for many different reasons. So you have to be very wise about every choice that you make. Um, So I'm sending you guys lots of love. If you guys are actually new to my podcast, um, feel free to subscribe, like, share, comment. Um, I'm sending you guys lots of love, light and peace. And I will talk to you guys on the next podcast. Love you guys. Bye.